Jane Addams Laura Jane Addams born on September 6, 1860, die on May 21, 1935 was an American settlement activist, reformer, social worker, sociologist, public administrator, and author. She was an important leader in the history of social work and women's suffrage in the United States and advocated for world peace. She co-founded Chicago's Hull House, one of America's most famous settlement houses. In 1910, Adams was awarded an honorary Master of Arts degree from Yale University, becoming the first woman to receive an honorary degree from the school. In 1920, she was a co-founder of the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU. In 1931, she became the first American woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, and is recognized as the founder of the social work profession in the United States. She was a radical pragmatist and the first woman public philosopher in the United States. In the progressive era, when presidents such as Theodore Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson identified themselves as reformers and social activists, Adams was one of the most prominent reformers. She helped America address and focus on issues that were of concern to mothers, such as the needs of children, local public health, and world peace. In her essay Utilization of Women in City Government, Adams noted the connection between the workings of government and the household, stating that many departments of government, such as sanitation and the schooling of children, could be traced back to traditional women's roles in the private sphere. When Adams died in 1935, she was the best-known female public figure in the United States. Adams was a major synthesizing figure in the domestic and international peace movements, serving as both a figurehead and leading theoretician. She was influenced especially by Russian novelist Leo Tolstoy and by the pragmatism of philosophers John Dewey and George Herbert Mead. She envisioned democracy, social justice and peace as mutually reinforcing, they all had to advance together to achieve any one. Adams became an anti-war activist from 1899, as part of the anti-imperialist movement that followed the Spanish-American War. Her book Newer Ideals of Peace 88, 1907, reshaped the peace movement worldwide to include ideals of social justice. She recruited social justice reformers like Alice Hamilton, Lillian Wald, Florence Kelly, and Emily Greenbach to join her in the new international women's peace movement after 1914. Adams's work came to fruition after World War I, when major institutional bodies began to link peace with social justice and probe the underlying causes of war and conflict. In 1899 and 1907, world leaders sought peace by convening an innovative and influential peace conference at The Hague. These conferences produced Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907. A 1914 conference was cancelled due to World War I. The void was filled by an unofficial conference convened by women at The Hague. At the time, both the U.S. and the Netherlands were neutral. Jane Addams chaired this path-breaking International Congress of Women at The Hague, which included almost 1,200 participants from 12 warring and neutral countries. Their goal was to develop a framework to end the violence of war. Both national and international political systems excluded women's voices. The women delegates argued that the exclusion of women from policy discourse and decisions around war and peace resulted in flawed policy. The delegates adopted a series of resolutions addressing these problems and called for extending the franchise and women's meaningful inclusion in formal international peace processes at war's end. Following the conference, Adams and a congressional delegation traveled throughout Europe meeting with leaders, citizen groups, and wounded soldiers from both sides. Her leadership during the conference and her travels to the capitals of the war-torn regions were cited in nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize. Adams was opposed to U.S. interventionism and expansionism and ultimately was against those who sought American dominance abroad. In 1915, she gave a speech at Carnegie Hall and was booed off stage for opposing U.S. intervention into World War I. Adams damned war as a cataclysm that undermined human kindness, solidarity, and civic friendship, and caused families across the world to struggle. In turn, 
Her views were denounced by patriotic groups and newspapers during World War I, 1917-18. Oswald Garrison Villar came to her defense when she suggested that armies gave liquor to soldiers just before major ground attacks. Take the case of Jane Addams for one, with what abuse did not the New York Times cover her, one of the noblest of our women, because she told the simple truth that the Allied troops were often given liquor or drugs before charging across no man's land. Yet when the facts came out at the hands of Sir Philip Gibbs and others not one word of apology was ever forthcoming. Even after the war, the Wilps program of peace and disarmament was characterized by opponents as radical, communist-influenced, unpatriotic, and unfeminine. Young veterans in the American Legion, supported by some members of the Daughters of the American Revolution, DAR, and the League of Women Voters, were ill-prepared to confront the older, better educated, more financially secure and nationally famous women of the Wilp. Nevertheless, the Dar could and did expel Adams from membership in their organization. The Legion's efforts to portray the Wilp members as dangerously naive females resonated with working-class audiences but President Calvin Coolidge and the middle classes supported Adams and her Wilp efforts in the 1920s to prohibit poison gas and outlaw war. After 1920, however, she was widely regarded as the greatest woman of the progressive era. In 1931, the award of the Nobel Peace Prize earned her near-unanimous acclaim. Jane Adams was also a philosopher of peace. Peace theorists often distinguish between negative and positive peace. Negative peace deals with the absence of violence or war. Positive peace is more complicated. It deals with the kind of society we aspire to, and can take into account concepts like justice, cooperation, the quality of relationships, freedom, order and harmony. Jane Addams's philosophy of peace is a type of positive peace. Patricia Shields and Joseph Soeters, 2017, have summarized her ideas of peace using the term peace weaving. They use weaving as a metaphor because it denotes connection. Fibers come together to form a cloth, which is both flexible and strong. Further, weaving is an activity in which men and women have historically engaged. Adams's peace weaving is a process which builds the fabric of peace by emphasizing relationships. Peace weaving builds these relationships by working on practical problems, engaging people widely with sympathetic understanding while recognizing that progress is measured by the welfare of the vulnerable. Death. While Adams was often troubled by health problems in her youth and throughout her life, her health began to take a more serious decline after she suffered a heart attack in 1926. She lived for another nine years before dying on May 21, 1935 at the age of 74, in Chicago, Illinois. Jane Addams is buried at Cedarville Cemetery, Cedarville, Illinois. Hull House and the Peace Movement are widely recognized as the key tangible pillars of Adams's legacy. While her life focused on the development of individuals, her ideas continued to influence social, political and economic reform in the United States, as well as internationally. Adams and Starr's creation of the Settlement House, Hull House, impacted the community, immigrant residents, and social work. Willard Motley, a resident artist of Hull House, extracting from Adams' central theory on symbolic interactionism, used the neighborhood and its people to write his 1948 bestseller, Knock on Any Door. His novel later became a well-known courtroom film in 1949. This book and film brought attention to how a resident lived an everyday life inside a settlement house and his relationship with Jane Addams. Addams's role as reformer enabled her to petition the establishment at and alter the social and physical geography of her Chicago neighborhood. Although contemporary academic sociologists defined her engagement as social work, Addams's efforts differed significantly from activities typically labeled as social work during that time period. Before Adams's powerful influence on the profession, social work was largely informed by a friendly visitor model in which typically wealthy women of high public stature visited impoverished individuals and, through systematic assessment and intervention, aimed to improve the lives of the poor.
Adams rejected the friendly visitor model in favor of a model of social reform slash social theory building, thereby introducing the now central tenets of social justice and reform to the field of social work. Adams worked with other reform groups toward goals including the first juvenile court law, tenement house regulation, an eight-hour working day for women, factory inspection, and workers' compensation. She advocated research aimed at determining the causes of poverty and crime, and she supported women's suffrage. She was a strong advocate of justice for immigrants, African Americans, and minority groups by becoming a chartered member of the NAACP. Among the projects that the members of Hull House opened were the Immigrants' Protective League, the Juvenile Protective Association, the first juvenile court in the United States, and a juvenile psychopathic clinic. Adams's influential writings and speeches, on behalf of the formation of the League of Nations and as a peace advocate, influenced the later shape of the United Nations. Jane Adams also sponsored the work of Naval Boyd, who founded the Recreational Training School at Hull House, a one-year educational program in group games, gymnastics, dancing, dramatic arts, play theory, and social problems. At Hull House, Naval Boyd ran movement and recreational groups for children, using games and improvisation to teach language skills, problem-solving, self-confidence and social skills. During the Great Depression, Boyd worked with the Recreational Project in the Works Progress Administration, WPA, as the Chicago Training School for Playground Workers, which subsequently became the foundation for the recreational therapy and educational drama movements in the U.S. One of her best-known disciples, Viola Spolin taught in the recreational theater program at Hull House during the WPA era. Spolin went on to be a pioneer in the improvisational theater movement in the U.S. and the inventor of theater games. The main legacy left by Jane Addams includes her involvement in the creation of the Hull House, impacting communities and the whole social structure, reaching out to colleges and universities in hopes of bettering the educational system, and passing on her knowledge to others through speeches and books. She paved the way for women by publishing several books and co-winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931 with Star. The Adams Neighborhood and Elementary School in Long Beach, California are named for her. Thanks for watching Herdery Channel. Don't forget to like the video. And subscribe our channel.